They started out a generation ago as simple black and white ping pong games on a TV screen. Today's video games are vivid, sophisticated, and fast moving. Driven by state of the art computer software and featuring the latest in high tech graphics. It all begins with the nerds who form what's called the core team. They brainstorm in meeting after meeting to figure out the proper balance of gameplay to cosmetics that their audience will pay for. They plan out a schedule so the game will be about 60% finished when its launch date arrives. They break down the game on paper and color code its components. In this example, green is for gameplay features, yellow is for audio, and orange is for microtransactions. Now, work for the concept art begins. While this art helps get the game's initial beta off the ground, most of this art will be retooled or scrapped as the publishing studio steps in to make changes. Graphic artists recreate those storyboard drawings within the game engine. Game studios are populated entirely by unwashed hipsters, so they do all of their design on 4x3 CRT monitors. After testing out some poses on the initial character, the animators cover them with artistic details and load in the newest dance moves ripped straight from Fortnite. Whoa there! <laughs> uh, the animators have to design every movement that each character in the game will make. Once that's done, the characters are given names. This one is called Le Prince. The final renders represent the latest in computer graphics. It's impossible to tell these aren't real photographs. Other animators work on the backgrounds, also known as stages, levels, and bitch work. Control H is the hotkey to call the company's suicide prevention hotline. This particular video game also contains short animated movies called cutscenes. Cutscenes are typically animated in high resolution, and yet will never look as good as their initial announcement trailer. This is especially true if that trailer is revealed at a gaming event, such as E3 or the Game Awards, where an estimated 95% of trailers shown are full of nothing but lies. Wait, hold on. Go back. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not edit this footage. You are witnessing a video game glitch escaping into the real world. Simply remarkable. Meanwhile, the cutscenes are animated to match the storyboards, mostly to make sure there are no bugs or glitches. Thanks to this step, each and every video game is shipped out completely bug-free. A man with a giant ego watches his own YouTube videos and then takes down notes of how handsome he is. He also practices drawing his sword during office hours, in case any fans run into him on the street to inform him he's not actually as handsome as he thinks he is. This lazy bitch is too busy playing video games during work hours to get any fucking work done. And finally, we snuck a microphone into the conference room of a leading game design company so you can hear just what happens behind the scenes. Oh my god, what are you doing? 
Are you scrapping the collectible sex dolls? We haven't even gotten the thing to run at a solid 20 FPS during the baptism scene. How many times do I have to get the belt out? I'm going straight up 2000s on you subhuman scum. I'm getting one of those studded emo belts. That's right, I'm an electronic arts executive producer, and I'm taking a trip to Hot Topic tonight because my team refuses to optimize this massive open world cinematic experience for mobile phones. You think a kid's gonna buy this and say, oh, look how much thought went into the characterization of the protagonist. Look how they grow as a person. Fuck you. Fuck you in your face. I want that kid to steal his mama's credit card so he can have enough coins or rupees or whatever the fuck we're using. Dinars? Platinum coated condoms? I want that kid to put down a Benjamin as soon as he gets to the second half of the radio tower mission and realizes he doesn't have a level 16 wire stripper. And so help me God, if the game doesn't crash when he tries it with that one, I'm gonna kidnap all your fucking loved ones and they'll be doing QA until the fucking sun burns out. On second thought, that audio might have been too behind the scenes.